Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Instinct Culture. It is Denise Salcedo, and I got another interview for you here today. I'm very happy to introduce to you my guest for today. This is round two with Leo Rush. What's up, Leo? What's going on? I'm so happy to be back on here for a second time. Thank you for, uh, for having me on here. I know it's so cool. I was so happy when, uh, you know, you and I got connected and I was like, yeah, let's do this. You know, you got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon that I can't wait to talk about just yet. Uh, but before we get to that, I love the jacket. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a uh, gala original uh, company out here in L.A. Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you like it. No, it really pops out like immediately. I was looking at it and I was like, that's a great jacket. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, but let's go ahead. And so the last time you and I talked to each other uh, was about five months ago. And I feel like so much has changed. Uh, how are you doing, Leo? Like, give us an update on how you're doing, you know, body wise. Uh, I know you recently uh, at the early, earlier this year, you dislocated your shoulder. Uh, how are you doing with all of that? I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's been such a roller coaster. Uh, like you said, like the last time we talked was five months ago. And I feel like, you know, almost two years worth of stuff have kind of happened within those five months. Uh, and it's it's a lot, but I'm 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 handling it and I'm uh, I'm navigating everything in a in a healthy way. So I'm I'm glad um, you know, even with the injury. Um, you know, being back on the shelf, you know, not too far off from my last injury. Uh, so it, it's a lot, but um, I'm dealing with it. I'm glad that I have my music to keep me busy. Um, you know, as I'm sure, you know, my family keeps me pretty busy as well. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good though. I'm doing really good. That's really awesome. Yeah, because I was going to say, so the last time we talked to each other, I think you had just made your return to AEW. And then from there, uh, you started, you know, you, that ended up ending. And then from there, you went on and you started doing uh, some independence. And it was at PWG where you got hurt. Um, I do want to ask you about that because you mentioned right now how close it was to your previous injury. And it that's not an easy thing to do to like recover from one injury, come back, get back into the groove of things, and then find yourself getting injured once again. So it kind of want to know what was kind of going through your mind at PWG uh, the second night when this happened to you and you know as a pro wrestler what is the mindset for you in terms of like this is something that you have to deal with that's a serious issue uh what was kind of running through your mind yeah um well well first I never thought that I would be in this position um I know that sometimes, you know, as a professional athlete, not even just a professional wrestler, but just like a professional athlete in general, that these things, these things can happen uh, and they're very real. Um, I remember, I remember being at the PC all the time when I was signed to WWE and I would see guys get injured like back to back, uh, you know, Ch uh, Ciampa for, for example. Um, you know, I remember seeing him get get hurt and have, you know, surgery after surgery. And I'm like, man, like, how do you how do you continue to keep pushing forward? Like, how do you not get discouraged? You know, so I always had that in the back of my mind um, and praying that that I would never end up in that position. But uh, but I did. Um, and I think. I was so shocked. Um, I, I remember being. I remember being like, extremely angry when it, when it happened. Um, I think when I separated my AC joint in my right shoulder uh, back in my first appearance in AEW, um, I was confused more than more than anything because I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know what happened. That was my first injury ever, um, you know, other than like a couple of concussions that I've had in the past. But um, this was the first injury that I've had. Uh, and I didn't know how to go about it. I didn't even know what it, what happened and how it happened. Um, so uh, the first injury was a lot of confusion. I was sad, uh, depressed a lot. Um, and then I think with this injury, with it happening so fast uh, and back to back, um, I think I was angry. Um, I think those are the two biggest differences between the two uh, injuries. Um, and I haven't even said this out, uh, publicly yet. So I, I'm assuming you, you will be the first one that, that I, that I say this to, but yeah, I, so what happened, um, at PWG, my shoulder went into my armpit, uh, and my arm was stuck. <laughs> 
Um, and I remember, um, I remember, I remember knowing that the match was almost going to be done. Like I was at the final, uh, the final minutes of the match. Um, I was happy that I, I made it through the entire match without getting uh, hurt or injured or anything. And uh, I remember taking a, a buckle bomb in the corner. And I remember getting hurt uh, 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 like almost five years ago with that and telling myself, man, I hope I don't get hurt with this move again. I hope I don't get hurt with this move again. And then I landed in the corner and I didn't get hurt. And I was like, yes. But then the very next move is when I got hurt. So I think I was uh, I was shocked. Uh, my shoulder went into my armpit. My arm was stuck. I didn't know what to really do. Um, so I rolled to my back and I put my wrist kind of in between my legs and I pulled and popped my shoulder back in place. But uh, once I got to the hospital, I, uh, I was informed that in the process, um, I tore I tore some 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 uh, some muscles and possibly some ligaments. So I had to get an MRI. And then once the, the, uh, I got the MRI, it showed that I tore three different muscles in my in my in my shoulder uh, and I had to get surgery. Um, so that was that was a lot to deal with. Um, you know, I immediately snapped into the mode of, you know, from being angry and being so disappointed uh, to um, it being kind of familiar because of my other shoulder injury. So I was like, okay, I know what to do. I know what kind and how much work has to get put into this in order to get back to where I need to be. And, you know, from that point on, it was just time to get to work. And, I, and that's what I did. But yeah, it, it was rough. Uh, uh, I mean, it still is rough um, because I'm away from, you know, the business that I love and, um, you know, so much is happening and I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on it. <laughs> but but I, I, I truly believe that, you know, things happen for a reason. And I think it was for a good reason. So I'm, I'm in good spirits. I know I feel it too, especially because I feel like during this time, and I know we'll talk about it in just a second, but it's like you, uh, you know, not only are you rehabbing and you're working on that, but you're also working on your music and you're working on those projects. But I do want to ask, I want to segue from here into uh, on May 14th, you returned to uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Capital Collision. And so you made this debut and you kind of, uh, you know, you said a couple of uh, things on the microphone and whatnot. You talked about not being uh, clear to compete just yet. Um, and you also talked about changing the landscape for the junior heavyweight division and even mentioned some of the names that of people you want to work with. So can you give us a little bit of insight in terms of uh, when you're probably expecting to be cleared if you're not cleared already as we speak and also kind of give us some insight on your plans with New Japan Strong, et cetera? Yeah. Um, well, my that event that, that happened, um, I, I feel like it was just meant to be. Um, you know, I didn't have any kind of plan or, or goal or, or when I wanted to come back. I just knew I needed to get healthy. I needed to take my time uh, and and I needed to be in the right uh, mind frame uh, in order to come back, you know, because I can I can, you know, I can heal physically and be ready physically. But, um, you know, I definitely feel like the wrestling industry is more a mental game than anything. Uh, that's at least what I've learned and what I've experienced. So I just wanted to make sure that, that, you know, I had all of my eggs and uh, well, not have all of my eggs in one basket, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I was ready. I was, I, I wasn't just ready physically, but ready mentally, uh, ready spiritually. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm at a time uh, in my life right now where um, I'm kind of, I'm evolving more and in, uh, more into a man. You know, I'm, I'm almost 30. It was just crazy because uh, I started my wrestling journey when I was 18 years old. I turned 28 this year. And, um, you know, I, I'm thinking about things uh, uh, differently. Uh, but when that when that when I saw that New Japan was going to was going to be uh, in D.C., you know, I, I went back home for, for my surgery, spent some time with, with some family. Uh, and I saw that they were going to be in DC and it, it, and it just felt right. It felt like, it felt like I needed to be there. It felt like I needed a fresh start and what better way to have that fresh start than to do that home, like, uh, in, in my hometown and kind of, you know, put my, uh, my stamp on, you know, 
when I do come back, I'm, I'm going to come back, um, um, you know, and it's not a cliche, but stronger, faster, healthier, you know, than ever before. You know, I, I'm definitely hungrier than, than, than I've, than I've ever been, uh, even first starting out wrestling. Um, I feel like there's more at stake, uh, and, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. As far as a, a return, um, you know, the doctor, uh, the surgeon did say that I am expecting a six to nine month recovery period, um, which was very hard to hear. Um, and I got hurt back in January uh, and I just had my surgery not too long ago. So um, I have some time, but I will say I'm, I'm healing a lot quicker than I thought I would. Uh, my, my personal trainer, my surgeon is saying that I'm healing a lot quicker, uh, probably from muscle memory, you know, being an athlete my entire life. So um, I'm definitely healing uh, pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm in no rush to come back, although I miss it um, a lot. I do want to take my time because I want to be healthy. I want to be ready uh, mentally. Uh, I want to be in the best shape that I've ever been in. Uh, and, I, and I plan on doing that. So hopefully uh, sooner rather rather than later. And it's crazy because one of the things I feel like right now with like news, we're talking about, you know, so many people suffering different types of injuries, you know, uh, recent news with CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, and just so many others that it, it, it feels like this is, you know, we already know that wrestling is a dangerous sport. We already know uh, things that can happen, but I think sometimes we don't always, uh, you know, we don't always get a, a grasp really of the reality that goes with the mental hurdles that, you know, wrestlers have to go through to not just, you know, come back from it, like, physically come back from a surgery physically but also come back from it ready you know mentally because you know you mentioned uh you know when you at pwg you're thinking you know oh my god you know last time i got hurt doing this move what if it happens again thank god it didn't happen again so these are kind of things that are going inside the performer's mind etc and so to me that's very interesting to hear because it's not every day you know uh me as a fan or you know people listening to this as fans it's not like we're in there uh in the ring uh experiencing it any of this we're just seeing it so it's a totally yeah. different experience so hearing you talk about that to me is it, it's pretty insightful yeah and it's um i think the the acceleration rate in which wrestling is like progressing right now is uh is insane i mean i feel like we're we're in uh, the craziest time ever in wrestling. I feel like that as long as, at least as long as I've been, uh, as long as I've been a part of the wrestling industry, this feels like such an intense time period within wrestling. Um, you know, you, you're getting to see all of these dream matches. Uh, you're getting to see all of these uh, people, you know, wrestling on TV, wrestle for independent companies and um, going overseas and stuff like that. But I feel like a lot of people don't take into consideration, um, you know, although there are a lot more opportunities for wrestlers and people are out there, uh, you know, and they're able to, uh, you know, make their money and continue to build their resumes and stuff like that. I mean, that means there's more bumps, there's more, there's more bruises, there's more, you know, I feel like it's inevitable for, for people to, to get hurt. I mean, uh, you know, things are moving at such a fast pace right now. And uh, I feel like a lot of wrestlers don't have the time to rest and recover. Um, you know, they're just going a million miles per second, you know, every day, all day. Uh, and it's, it's a lot, it's a, it's, it's a big, um, you know, it's a big wear and tear on the body. And, um, you know, as crazy as it sounds, I knew that the shoulder was gonna give out eventually. I knew it. Uh, I did. I just didn't know when. Um, it sucks that it had to be at Battle of Los Angeles. You know, my 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 Battle of Los Angeles. You know, debut. Um, but I'm 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 praying and I'm hoping that uh, for the sake of the performers' bodies, um, that things do kind of slow down a little bit because you are starting to see a lot of people get hurt. And um, like I said, I feel like it's inevitable just with the times that we're in. Um, so, yeah. And it's hard too, because you mentioned this period of wrestling being very intense. And by that, I also see it as like, there's lots of competitions. There's lots of young guys that are going out there and can do these crazy things. But with these crazy things also comes, you know, those repercussions, those bumps, et cetera, you know, taking so many, but you know, so many, uh, you know, these guys, 
you know, we have, they have to do it because they, uh, that's the way to get your name out there, right? That's the way to get noticed. That's the way for you to, you know, make it to these next big promotions, et cetera. So I feel like when you mentioned like it's inevitable, but it's also intense, it, it feels very, very true. And unfortunately I do think there's no, I don't know if there's a way to slow it down because really how do you get known? It's by going from show to show to show and getting your name out there and having a collection of good matches so that people can be like, yo, Hey, this guy, he should be on your radar. Cause he's going out there and having these like incredible matches with so-and-so wrestlers. Yeah. I feel, I mean, not even just my, I just, I feel for, uh, the wrestlers today. Um, because like you said, you have to go out there. You have to put on a performance. Uh, you have to go to, you know, X, Y, and Z promotion to, to get your name out there and be known um, and recognized. But I feel like the demand is so high right now for like high intense action. You, like I said, you're seeing the, these dream cards on every independent show. You know, when I was 20, 21 years old on the independent scene, the only like staffed dream cards like that were like PWG. When you had shows that had every match was just like banger after banger after banger after banger. But now you're starting to see like every independent promotion is like a PWG style card. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot of wear and tear on the body. And, um, you know, I hope I hope that um, for the sake of the wrestlers, uh, that some of the promoters um, start to kind of swap out talent here and there, you know, start using some of the younger guys that, that have been training for, for, for a long time. I feel like, you know, once, once WWE released, you know, all of those people, uh, they kind of flushed out the entire um, other side of things. You know, you had all of those WWE guys, uh, now going to AEW and now you got to think like where are those the people that were in those spots before where are they going to go all right they're going to go in the mid card now where are those people that were already in the mid card before those WWE people came all right now they're going to go kind of at the bottom of the, the 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 food chain when it comes to you know programs and stuff like that and then you got to think about the guys that and the girls that have been training um for a long time you know now those people have to fight and do even more on these indie shows just to you know get noticed and you know they, they got to compete with people that have been on tv for for years and so they're doing more impact to their bodies to try to you know get themselves get themselves over which um which which is it's a lot it, it's definitely a lot there's the, the pool is full <laughs> it's overcrowded right now and, um, you know, you're starting to see people get hurt. So hopefully, you uh, you know, within the next couple of weeks or months or, you know, before the year is up, you start to see some some people getting, um, you know, swapped out and you start to see some new faces on the scene because the people that are on TV right now, they're going to need a break eventually. And I like the way you described it, too, because while you were kind of painting this picture, it's like a domino effect, you know, like this person, you know, this slot of this stack of group is now here. And it, it really is a domino effect. So it is very interesting to hear that. And one of the things I do want to touch on as well is because uh, we mentioned how quickly things in your life have been changing, you know, WWE to AEW to, you know, now working on your music, appearing on New Japan. You did a couple of indies in between there and et cetera. Uh, how do you keep with the movement of pro wrestling? Because it is a very fast paced business. So as a wrestler, how do you make sure to stay kind of, uh, you know, how do you make sure to stay like a relevant and be just like on top of that ever changing landscape? Um, for me, I, it's always been incredibly important for me to be true to myself and to be myself and not be afraid to be myself. Because I feel like if you're being yourself, you're being different. Um, I, I think a lot, I think a lot of people tend to kind of see trends within wrestling and gravitate towards that uh, uh, into what's hot right now. And when that's all you have to do is be yourself. Uh, and I think it's important to also, you know, take breaks. Uh, it's important to, uh, it's important to be missed. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's the same within like a relationship. If you, if you're with the same person, like every day, all day, 
like you're not going to miss them as much. Like you got to get away for a little bit in order to, uh, in order to, you know, be welcomed um, back. Um, I also think social media has, uh, has, has not ruined things, but changed a lot of things within wrestling. I think nothing is a surprise anymore. Um, the mystery factor is, is, is gone. I think that's how you stay interesting. Uh, you, you, you can never let people know what your next move is. So, um, that's how I try to keep myself relevant is to stay interesting, to, to continue to create mystery behind, you know, Leo Rush. People never know what I'm going to do next. And I think that is what keeps me uh, and keeps my name uh, revolving in the, in the wrestling industry. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, you, you, you're starting to see uh, crazier and crazier athletes. I mean, the, this time period is the craziest athletes I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, they, they might as well be in the Olympics for gymnastics. Like, I don't even try to compete with that, you know, a- anymore. Um, but, yeah, I think I think just, just being yourself, just being myself uh, more specifically and, and, and keeping people guessing. It's, it's always fun when, when uh, you don't know what's going on, so. Well, you mentioned keeping people guessing and doing things and not, you know, people not knowing what you're going to do next and this and that. Uh, So let's jump into your music, because that's one of the main reasons that we're here today. And I cannot wait to chat with you about this, because you're going to be bringing out your second EP, Not Not Found 2, out on June 24th. Uh, I got to listen to your first EP, and I liked a lot of what you had five tracks on there. And I was like listening to it. I was vibing with it. So I want to ask you, uh, with Not Found 2, what can people expect uh, in terms of similarities, differences from not found the first one, etc. I think, I think some similarities between the two is the vulnerability. I think um, I, I've liked, I, I really like who I'm becoming as an as an artist, uh, and and seeing how that translates uh, into wrestling and how that translates into my uh, my personal life. Um, and I think that it gels well t- together. Um, and I feel like, uh, yeah, the vo- the vulnerability. I think I think it's important for people to know. With me being uh, who I am, and 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 having a voice, and and having an on screen presence, and having a fan base. I think it's important for me to be open and to be vulnerable with my fan base. Uh, especially, uh, you know, in, in the time that the world is just in right now. I think people need guidance. They need a role model. They need, uh, they need positivity. Uh, and, and, that's, and that's what I'm bringing. Uh, I think one thing that, that people can expect um, is growth uh, in Not Found 2. Um, listening back to Not Found 1, you can kind of hear the fear that I have of uh, being, um, you know, in LA and being in the entertainment industry while, you know, uh, wearing different hats of being like a professional wrestler and a husband and a father and, and trying to do all of these things while being in the entertainment industry. Uh, but then when you listen to Not Found 2, you're going to be able to hear and um, see, even with the visuals of like, you know, how much I've grown uh, mentally, spiritually, uh, you know, uh, having a focused path and and uh yeah I, I i'm really excited for people to listen to not found too because it's it's me um and i think that's something that i haven't been able to tackle as much uh as i would like to in wrestling because you know we're playing these larger than life characters and people tend to buy into what they're seeing on tv with these characters so i'm glad that i'm able to pull that back a little bit and uh, you know talk on some real life things that that um uh that i that i go by um in my everyday you know life and and where i want to be in life and who i want to impact and, and stuff like that so um it's a pretty inspirational positive message overall but it's fun Uh, and it's real. So I think people are going to really like it. 
I like that. And I like that you explain, you know, wearing different hats and, you know, all of the different pressures and things that, you know, goes through people's minds when, you know, they're trying to thrive in so many different portions of their life, you know, with your music, with wrestling, with your personal life, et cetera. There's a lot of different, uh, we're, you know, as humans, I feel as we're pulled in all of these different directions and we're expected to thrive in all of these different uh, ways, but it's a whole lot. So um, in terms of how many tracks can we expect from um, this new EP? You can expect another five. Uh, okay, yeah, perfect. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be another five. Um, uh, I almost wanted to treat it as if um, I'm I'm adding five to the previous five to make an entire kind of like not found album, so people can have like a full experience while listening to both. So um, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be another five. Do you have any favorite tracks that you want to share with us or any like favorite lyrics or just something that we can keep an eye on be like, oh yeah, like Leo told us about this specific track, et cetera. Um, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can do, um, I'll tell you what, I'll send you the hook to one of, to my single, uh, which I think is going to resonate with a lot of people. Um, but it's called Hard to Explain, and, and that's going to be the single. And I think that that wraps up um, everything of what I've, what I've currently been going through and, and what um, I'm, a, I'm, you know, setting out to accomplish, um, you know, as, as a man, as a you know, father, as a husband, as, you know, an entertainer. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, here it goes. Um, I'm going through changes. And I didn't know if you can tell that my mind is racing. Thinking of all the things I felt. I'm learning patience and how to evolve with all my guilt. It's getting hard to explain in my head. So yeah, that's uh that's some some lyrics that I that I really like that I, I feel like a lot of people will uh, gravitate towards. I love it. it. Feels very deep. Like immediately, I felt connected. And the second you had mentioned, you gave us, you know, the background that you gave us going into it. I feel it. I love the vibe, man. Uh, that's <laughs> very, very exciting. I, honestly, I'm very excited for you, especially that you get to, you know, now add these additional five songs to the five songs that you already had and kind of see it all together as a whole. I think that's very cool. Now, I was on your Twitter account, and one of the things that you also put out there is you kind of mentioned a little tease about like touring. So, can you give us some, uh, some info? as to like what your goals are now with your music now that you technically have like a cohesive you know you're gonna have two portions of not found you know the two eps out uh can you give us a little bit of insight into what some of your goals are uh, for, with in regards to your music for sure no i definitely so m me and my team have been uh trying to put together uh, a tour there's no official uh set uh, tour dates yet but um we have been working on uh, trying to get some dates lined up and, you know, officially uh, take my music on the road. I feel like I've put in um, some good amount of time to get myself accustomed to who I am as an artist and what my sound is and um, how I want to, you know, present myself to my fan base uh, within music. So um, I'm looking forward to that day uh, because um, I've already had the experience of touring, you know, with wrestling. And, and being in front of crowds and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later, I'll be able to announce um, a few dates, even even if it's not, you know, a world tour, even if it's just something uh, within the States or opening up for someone or being a part of a festival or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking to, to book out some dates. So any fans listening to this right now, uh, let me know where you want me to come, uh, you know, let me know what state you're in and what city you're in and hopefully we can get something set up. I love it. I love it. Well, Leo, I want to thank you so much for coming on here and chatting wrestling with me, chatting music with me. It was a lot of fun to reconnect and just kind of see what's going on in life. So before we go, please let the people know where they can find your, uh, your, your new EP coming out on June 24th and any other stuff you'd like to plug in. For sure. Uh, you can find my new EP, Not Found 2, on all streaming platforms, uh, June 24th. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter for any updates at I am Leo Rush. Or if you want to just go to one place just to see everything, you can head on over to my website at leorush.com. 
and um, see all and any updates that I have going on with what I you know currently have going on and what's coming up. So, yeah. And good stuff too. I was going to mention, I forgot to mention this, but I love the album cover too. It's very, very like dramatic and intense. Yeah. And it's like a cool visual. When I was on your website, I loved like, uh, just like the way that everything was formatted. It looked really cool. Like the vibe, I felt it. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, I'm going to post all of the links in the description box below where you guys can check out Leo's new music, etc. All of that good stuff. You guys know the drill in the description box below. As always, please make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more interviews just like this one. And until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo. This is Leo Rush. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.